Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new Rotterdam white scarf video. My name is Thijs, aka The Shaman Painter, and it's been a long time due since we showed some respect for those nameless soldiers of Middle Earth. That's why we started a brand new series called Warriors of Middle Earth. And what I'll be trying to do is show some respect and love for those, um, yeah, for those models that aren't always in the spotlight. So it's the warriors. Uh, most of them are made in plastic. Um, most of them make up the majority of your armies. So why not show them uh, some more respect? Because there are a lot of painting tutorials, painting videos out there for those uh, Aragorns, uh, Saurons, uh, Imrahils. Uh, Tauriels, Legolas's, um, but uh, we believe there isn't a lot of love for those lonely warriors. So Urukai scouts, uh, Rowan warriors, um, maybe a, a, a little goblin here and there. So <laughs> it's time to show those models some love. Uh, this is the first video in a series of many more. Uh, we'll start off with the Urukai berserker. It's one of my favorite models uh, in the game. Uh, I think it's also one of the uh, coolest mo uh, movie characters out there, blowing up the, the walls of Helm's Deep. Um, and that's why I chosen to kick off with a bang, if you know what I mean. Um, and start out with this uh, Urukai Berserker. Many will follow. Um, and if you appreciate this, uh, this kind of uh, video or uh, appreciate uh, our channel, please consider subscribing to our channel and liking this video. And if you want to support us even more, uh, although subscribing and liking is already very much appreciated, please consider our Patreon page. We have uh, three levels. Uh, check out in the links uh, below. Now, let's get started. So guys, this will be uh, the final result. Um, I'm really curious uh, on how you've painted your Berserker. Uh, every Friday we have a work in progress post on our uh, Facebook page. Um, and I'm kind of curious how you guys uh, painted up uh, your Berserkers. Uh, this is how I did mine. Uh, I started with a, a layer of Tusker fur for the, um, uh, for the skin. This is a very special model because it's one of the few mo models uh, in the Middle Earth range that shows uh, this much skin. I think the only other models that uh, that have this kind of uh, uh, nudity is uh, are, uh, are the the goblins, the from Goblin Town. And what I did because Tusker fur is not a, a base color; it's a layer color, so it's not as opaque as uh, as a base color and doesn't cover as well over uh, dark or light colors. Uh, it's, it's more translucent than a, than a base color. So I sprayed the, uh, the entire model before I started with Mechanicus Standard Gray because it's uh, the most neutral color I had. If you use uh, Raid Seer, for example, that's a more uh, yellowish white color, it would also be a warmer tone. Then I used Contrast Paint at Dark Oat Flash. Uh, the neat benefits of uh, contrast paints is that they are slightly shiny and berserkers as you've seen in the movie have a bit of a uh, sweaty skin uh, not as sweaty <laughs> as it might look because um, I think the only place that they show berserkers in the movies is at the siege of Helm's Deep and at the siege it's actually raining so that's why they're also a bit more shiny than other other characters in the movies. That's not a look we're particularly going for. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the dark red skin tones. I'm more a fan of the more um, yeah neutral uh, skin tones. So I'm starting with Tusker fur again and repainting uh, uh, the muscle uh, tones of the of the skin. Really watering her down and making sure that I blend. Uh, the edges smoothly um, that way we'll make sure that we do not have any harsh uh, transitions from the, the contrast painted parts and uh, the layered parts some bits of the film are a bit blurry as you can see here I try to compensate with my hand um, as you can see 
I, I'm just a re real fan of this uh, this skin tone. It's uh, really working out quite well. So the next layer will be Night Questor Flesh, which is a, a dark skin color, but it's really it's a bit more um, it's a bit less saturated than the, the Tuscor fur, so it creates a, a good second layer for uh, the skin tones. And this is also one of the steps that I, you know, I normally do two or three layers coming from the base color and the base color is just confirmed from this. And what I've noticed here is that after the base color and uh, the Night Quester Flash, you actually got a quite good result. And it's actually more than satisfying for me, um, especially because we're also going to do some freehanding on the skin. I don't want any harsh highlights on the skin. So we use Tondia Brown, which is a new color for, from Games Workshop. It's a more greenish brown. So it's a more rotten brown. It's a more dirty brown than, uh, than the other brown tones in the, the Citadel range. And I use this for all the, the leather or cloth parts of the, of the model. It suits the character quite well, especially because um, yeah, they, they are born from the dirt, the Urukai. So this uh, fits perfectly. Um, it's a quite a challenge to see what parts are actually flesh, wh which parts are metal and which parts are cloth. Uh, this is a quite old model. Uh, it's actually one of the berserkers with uh, the torch in his hand, but I changed the torch for a, I converted it slightly for a normal Urukai sword uh, because uh, I thought it was a bit more fitting. I do like the plastic models for the Berserkers, especially this pose when he's holding the two-handed sword with just one hand. I think it's really awesome and really cinematic. Um, again, I'm quite curious uh, how you how you guys painted your Berserkers. Uh, please show that in the comments on our weekly uh, work in progress post on Friday. It would work out, uh, yeah. And how you've managed to follow this tutorial. Uh, maybe you uh, you have an Isengard armor for your own to be. Uh, to be painted up and uh, you enjoyed this tutorial and um, yeah uh, I use iron warriors for the for the iron parts it's a dirty steel everything is of course dirty or uh, a bit uh, rusted or a bit dark or muted and it contrasts uh, quite well with uh, the lighter skin and that's also why I'm not a big fan of painting the Urukai Berserker skin a dark red because it gives it a, a, a yeah, it, it mutes the, the model quite badly. Use Agrax Earthshade for the for all the leather parts, but also the the metal parts. Also gives a bit more dusty look to the metal parts because the metal parts are a bit too clean at this uh, stage. Also quite curious uh, if you have any uh, favor uh, favorites when it comes to Warriors of Middle Earth. Uh, we're doing this series; it's a new series for us, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to film. Uh, these kind of tutorials is really where uh, this is a, a work of love so to say uh, it's one of uh, my uh, childhood memories painting these models uh, so repainting with Tondia Brown uh, but if you have any uh, warriors that you would like to see uh, uh, in one of our painting tutorials for, for this series Warriors of Middle Earth please comment uh, below um, yeah, but we'll make sure that uh, our goal is to paint all the, the warriors of Middle Earth eventually, starting with the plastic uh, uh, models and then uh, moving up to maybe resin or others. Uh, then we, um, for, for the leather, I use Gorthrop Brown, which is a grayish brown. Also, uh, because if you would use Mornfang Brown, um, that would also be uh, the same tone as the skin tones so if you use morphine brown for example that's a reddish brown and what we what you would create is um, it's not complementary to the skin tone so it, it wouldn't pop as much as a grayish brown because gray is inevitably a bit of a bluish color so gorther brown is also a good um, match for uh, creating a bit more contrast with skin tones um, and the Thondia brown is a more greenish brown as I said before, so that's also a bit of a cold color. Uh, although I think Thondia brown is still a bit... Um, yeah. And 
uh, to end it all up, I used uh, Baneblade Brown, which is a follow-up on Gorther Brown, which is actually a more lighter version of uh, Gorther Brown. Uh, it's a more ivory color. Um, yeah, it's just to make uh, those um, leather parts really pop out. As they, as, uh, and it also makes them make makes it look a bit more dry and more scathed and more 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 cracked. Uh, which is also a nice contrast for the slightly shiny uh, skin tones. Um, so I use Typhus Corrosion. Use a different brush for uh, this part. Uh, as you can see here, I use a really mangled up uh, old brush that I use for uh, terrain. Um, because Typhus Corrosion is like running sand, sandy liquid through your brush it's not really <laughs> if you want to take care of your brushes don't use types corrosion it's really bad for your brushes it's a uh, emulsion of almost like texture paint and, and water and it's not really that good so I use rune frank steel to create uh, a highlight on the, the metal parts and what I did I only sort of scaffed the sides and, and touched up uh, bits that, that would have been used a lot as if, as if the metal has been hit and as if, uh, and used in battle. Putting a, a bit, bit of scratches and, and, and irregular pattern on it. Um, a friend of mine has a replica of that work I swore it's so awesome, also in real life. I think everybody <laughs> You should have a Urukai. Uh, is it the axe or is it a, is it a sword? That's actually a good question. So I used a Tau Light Ogre and I watered it down three parts water, one part uh, paint. And that's why you in, in that way you create uh, a weather uh, fluid, a weathering fluid, which you can use to uh, simulate rust or uh, rust spots. It's not as it's not as um, heavy as uh, as your riser rust, and it's uh, really subtle, just like the skeleton horde, which creates a more dirty feel, a muddy, muddy feel. Um, I also use this on my Iron Throne, for example, the Song of Ice Fire Manager. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way to uh, create a dusty effect on uh, metal parts. So we use some Wraithbone to create um, the free hands for the for the fingers. This is something I, I, I did from memory. It was not really something I did. Um, yeah, it, it's handy to have, have like a, a sample in front of you on your computer. Maybe look it up on the internet, how you can do this or how, how a hand print would look like. Because I should have done that, but I think it works out great, especially if you, uh, yeah, just tip out the fingers for, and then um, do it part by part. You don't have to paint the freehand uh, in one go. It's something that you can add on as much as you like. Uh, the, the thing with freehands is people always overdo them. So they want to do it in one go. But if you do too much, there's no way to uh, correct yourself if you do too few, uh, too little uh, effect. You can still add on to it. This is the final result, and it's the first uh, warrior of Middle Earth that we've uh, shown in the spotlight. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing and showing your models as well. And up to the next warrior.